The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, good morning to our friends in the lands down under and across the ditch. Uh, and it's great to be with you today. So, um, yes, hello, Hank, uh, down there in uh, The Hunter and uh, William, either in Los Angeles or Honolulu. We're never quite sure where William is. He's a traveler. Uh, so how's the volume, folks? Can you, can you hear me all right? Please type in the question box uh, that you can hear me. One, two, three. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Murph, of course, always with us. Great to have you with us. Uh, and Hank says his hearing is a good down in um, the Hunter Valley as well. So uh, that's great to have you with us. And James, of course, you too. Boy, it's good to have you with us. That's uh, Jim. Good to have you with us. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen you. Uh, good to have you with us. Okay, folks, so uh, here we are. It's all happening. Lots of people here today. Thank you for being with us. See what else I can find here of interest. Okay, so Al's with us. Uh, yeah, uh, Albert, he's a tutorial guy. Andrew's with us. Barry, welcome, Barry. Welcome to have you with us. Uh, Benjamin, of course, he's been with us for a while now. Good to have you with us, mate. Uh, Brian down in Sydney, I think. Uh, Brian, good to have you with us. Um, Colin. Uh, Dave, the other Dave, he's a tutorial guy. The other Dave, he's another tutorial guy over in New Zealand. I uh, hope it's uh, nice over there for you, Dave. But I think you, I think New Zealand's done really well with its uh, COVID control, hasn't it? Wonderful, Deborah. Uh, we don't have many ladies with us, uh, Deborah, uh, and we love having ladies uh, with us. So let's always give a special welcome uh, to ladies. Doug, nice to see you with us, Christian, as well. George, uh, Greg. Oh, a couple of Greg. Greg over in uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, good to have you with us, mate. He's a tutorial guy, a wealth fund manager, Hank down in the Hunter Valley. Uh, I think your son's going to see me next, uh, have a meeting, uh, you know, a uh, tutorial with me next week, uh, Hank. Got an email from yesterday. Uh, Jim uh, is with us. Uh, Jocelyn, special welcome to you, Jocelyn. We love having ladies with us. Joel from Vero Beach. I got it right first time. There you go, mate. Uh, Brian's on the Sunshine Coast. That's interesting. Thank you, Brian. For some reason, I thought you were in uh, uh, Sydney. Do excuse me, John, down in the uh, Coffs Harbour. Uh, good to hear from you, John. He's a tutorial guy. Uh, so um, uh, says the other John, another John. We've got three of them here today. Four, sorry. Uh, Larry, good to have you with us. Um, Mark, of course. Uh, the other Mark. Another one, Mark L. He's a long-time Daniel Code tutorial guy. Done a tutorial, very, very good at it too. Uh, Martin and Michael. Oh, that's Mike. Mike, uh, Mike, the dentist up in Chicago. He came to a Daniel Code tutorial years ago. Great to have you still with us, of course, Mike. Uh, Murph, of course. Uh, Miles, good to have you with us. Uh, oh boy, here we are. Lots more. Uh, Peter, lots of Peters. The Peter, who's the uh, Peter Rims, a super day trader. Very good to have you with us. Sally, great to have you with us. Welcome. Uh, we always uh, love having ladies with us, and I always try to give you a special welcome. It's great having you here, Scott, of course. Uh, Sean, Vicky, yeah, Vicky, uh, welcome, Vicky. We've got three or four ladies with us today. That's great. And William, who I say is uh, somewhere either in LA or Hawaii, you never quite know where he moves around. I think that's a pretty good life you've got organised over there, mate. <coughs> Do excuse me. So, COVID, how are you going, everyone? I mean, God, I've been singing the praises of Australia because um, they've managed to supposedly shut the borders and uh, supposedly uh, keep us protected from the virus, uh, which is pretty much the opposite to what the States has done, uh, US. Um but the, uh, apart from an outbreak in Victoria, uh, the two or 800 people die. The rest of the country had been remarkably well protected. Uh, uh, can we have uh, da, 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 uh, the way we'll see who's here? Can we have transparency here? 
in the chat. That way we'll see who's here and you won't have to introduce everyone. David, I actually like saying hello to people. Um, I do like that. Um, and um, it's also a question of confidentiality of our clients that we can't uh, disclose them uh, to others. Uh, so the answer to that, I'm afraid, is no. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, so uh, we're in lockdown. Uh, we've had a snap three-day lockdown in the wonderful uh, state of Queensland. Uh, and uh, we've been blessed in being remarkably spared from all of this uh, COVID business here uh, pretty well since March last year. Um, and um, uh, three new uh, cases uh, in uh, Brisbane, uh, the capital of this state, um, has put us into lockdown. And uh, Australia is a federation, the same as the US. We have a federal government and we have independent state governments. Um, and in the US, uh, states' rights is a very, very big deal. Uh, in Australia, not so much. You hardly ever... Uh, uh, hear or see of an issue where the states are uh, in conflict with the uh, federal government, but they are at the moment. Um, and every time there's a lockdown and, um, and by any one or more of the states, um, it's remarkably popular uh, with the um, voters. Uh, and of course, that's uh, what drives uh, the behavior of politicians. Um, and um, uh, they've done it again. We've uh, had, uh, as I say, two or three cases in Brisbane. Um, and um, government's got, state government's got hysterical and slapped lockdown on us, which is ridiculous. There's, there's so little um, COVID in this state, but this is the first time that they've um, had the uh, Delta virus, uh, which is the Indian version of uh, COVID. So uh, you remember we had Alpha, that's the British version of it. Delta is the one that uh, came out of India, which is now very dominant in the US, uh, and they're worried that that'll be the same situation in Australia. It's apparently remarkably transmissible. Um, uh, it used to be the idea with the uh, original version and the alpha uh, that it took probably 15 minutes of exposure to uh, uh, contract uh, COVID, this uh, Delta virus. Uh, the Indian virus version of it, at least I should say, um, is uh, so transmissible that uh, you can you can you can get infected in a matter of seconds. Um, and some of this is what's been going on in these quarantine hotels. If you uh, want to get into Australia, you have to uh, do a 14-day quarantine um, in a government-run um, hotel, um, and the uh, and, and it's pretty serious stuff. Uh, uh, Originally, they had the police and the army uh, enforcing it, and the police still are. Uh, but uh, the point is that uh, hotels um, are not really built uh, for uh, to control contagion. Uh, most of these hotels do have cross air flows or uh, air flows at least out of each room to the um, corridor, which you, you'd understand. They've got air conditioning pressure in the rooms and pressure slightly higher than the pressure in the corridors, open the door to get your meal and uh, uh, out goes a, um, a load of COVID virus. Um, and um, yeah, uh, Leon, yeah, uh, quite, <laughs> there's a lot of comment on this. Uh, Australia's had one death this year. Uh, don't forget, no, absolutely right. Uh, Hank said, yeah, this is a new and improved version. Uh, Leon saying, uh, I can see you have the COVID fear. Lol, what a joke. Um, and, and one currently in ICU. There you are. There, so there's practically no uh, cases at all in this country. Uh, yet uh, we're in lockdown. Um, Victoria is in lockdown. South Australia's just gone into lockdown. West Australia is in lockdown, Northern Territory is in lockdown. So the only state that's not totally in lockdown is New South Wales, um, who uh, have got the uh, biggest of the most recent outbreaks. But uh, even they are not big numbers. Uh, and uh, as a, a client here, a friend here said, Leon and David, there's, it's, I mean, they're not, they're not dying of it here. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's just too much drama. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So it's been a, uh, it's been a serious pain. But anyway, uh, I guess um, 
overall. Um, I'm still on the side of the government. They've done a great job uh, in uh, getting us here. But uh, strangely enough, the rollout of the COVID vaccine um, has been a total disaster. Um, and the government initially made a wrong bet. They bet heavily on AstraZeneca, uh, which is the Oxford University uh, British uh, version of the vaccine, uh, which is almost free. It's like five, six dollars um, um, a shot. Uh, and uh, Oxford University came out and said that they'd uh, gone into a partnership to, to manufacture AstraZeneca uh, all over the world. Uh, but um, they'd chosen a company that was prepared to do it. Uh, they say they're doing it of cost, at cost. Of course, that, that won't be quite right. There'll be some profit somewhere. You can be sure of that. But a very attractive for the reason that um, it doesn't require intense uh, freezing temperatures. Uh, the uh, ask the um, uh, Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are actually more effective, or seem to be on the published results more effective, uh, but they have to be kept in seriously cold cold storage uh, and the only uh, facilities that have that capability are uh, some hospitals um, and uh, it's made it very hard to get that out around the countryside and into the rural areas uh, and it's very expensive uh, the uh, so the government of course is going to love astrazeneca because it's so cheap it's not even a dot on the balance sheet really um, and uh, it can be driven around at uh, normal uh, refrigeration, uh, normal refrigerator temperatures. Uh, so it, it's got lots recommending it. And now, of course, it's being manufactured in Australia. So that's why this government pushing it. Um, and there's a strong kickback. There's an awful lot of people who are saying, um, I don't want to have that vaccine. I want to get the Pfizer vaccine. Well, of course, it's very hard to get the Pfizer vaccine because the government's made sure all of them got vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, almost uh, all frontline medical uh, folks have been vaccinated uh, with the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, uh, that means for the rest of us, um, the vast majority of us uh, until now have been had to make do with the AstraZeneca. But, you know, something is better than nothing. I'm all, all in favour of vaccination. I've had two shots of the AstraZeneca uh, one, and uh, I'm really happy that I got it. Problem is the borders aren't open, so I can't come over and see you folks. Uh, but it turns out that an awful lot of people are travelling, despite the government saying you can't. You've got to make an application uh, showing, giving you reasons and the urgency and what have you. There, but there have been literally thousands and thousands of people coming in and out of Australia, um, and the uh, media has really done a poor job in highlighting that. But anyway. Uh, that's uh, where we are. Think what else we got? We have to go off here now. Singapore seems to have it right. Uh, no cases. Hospital oh, actually seven deaths. Uh, did did Italy renege on us? I don't know what Italy was doing, David. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on, folks. We've got so much to talk about today with uh, markets and uh, trading, uh, which of course is uh, my passion. Uh, so um, it's all good. Uh, it's all, oh, AstraZeneca from them, yeah. Uh, most frontline, this is from Leon, most frontline health providers have declined the jab. Leon, that's really interesting. My uh, brother-in-law um, is the chief, uh, is the head of neurosurgery um, uh, in, in, New, in the South Island of New Zealand across the ditch here. And uh, neither him uh, uh, nor his uh, two sisters, one of whom is my wife, uh, uh, are having the shot. They simply say we've been uh, guinea pigs. That, that we don't know the side effects. We, it hasn't been going long enough, and they're saying they're not going to have the uh, shot for another for at least three years. Um, data on it. So uh, you know, there's everyone's got a everyone's um, yeah because they're experimental. Yeah. yeah. So everyone's got a view, haven't they, folks? <laughs> It's like trading sometimes. Okay, let's move on. So uh, today I want to talk about market sentiment and, and your belief systems, my belief systems. So what markets are, those bars on the chart that you see, they're really uh, marking um, the psychology, if you like, of all of the market participants. This is what gives you market sentiment. Uh, and, and price is really... Uh, an outcome of the um, combined belief and expectations of buyers and sellers. 
And now for every buyer there's a seller, every seller there's a buyer. So in a bull market, buyers are prepared to chase the market or pay higher prices to secure the stock or uh, whatever it was in bear markets, it's the opposite. Um, and there's a continual battle between bulls and bears and everybody has a bias. Uh, there's very, very few people who can say they don't have a bias. Uh, but you've got to distinguish between your past bias of your personal beliefs and what is your bias in trading. And Nirvana, of course, is that you don't have a bias in trading. Um, and uh, you can see all of the reasons. So uh, by nature, I'm a big bear. Uh, really, I am, and I always have been. Uh, I believe housing prices are ridiculous. The average price for a house in the state of New South Wales, not just in the big cities, in the whole state, is over a million dollars. Average house prices in that state, which is just south of us here in Queensland, went up $32,000 in one month in June. Can you believe it? Um, I believe new car prices are ridiculous. I believe the price of meat is crazy. Um, I said two months ago, uh, I said two months ago that uh, household inflation is really at 14%. Some of you, those who come to these tutorials regularly will remember me saying that. And uh, nobody had talked about inflation for years, uh, literally years. Um, then all of a sudden, the very next day, uh, of the seven newspapers and uh, the websites that I uh, scan every day, no less than five of them had um, an article on inflation's here, guys, or coming, or here, depending on your view. Um, so um, inflation's become a big deal all of a sudden. But uh, boy, I can promise you, inflation's been here a long time before the economists got around to acknowledging it. And uh, of course, don't forget that the government inflation uh, figures, uh, the CPI, Consumer Price Index, is called in this country, have similar uh, uh, releases of that data in the US, um, is um, totally ridiculous. Um, the prices are what they call hedonic, uh, which means that, for example, if the price of a car goes up, uh, they don't put that increase in price. That's not created in the uh, CPI inflation figures at all. Uh, what they actually do by when I say it's hedonic, they say, oh, well, uh, these are the improvements that's been made to this uh, new uh, version of the car. Um, so uh, those increase, those those improvements um, have increased the value uh, of the car accordingly. So there's zero inflation in new car prices. It's ridiculous. Uh, the price of food stocks, uh, food, um, is just simply not 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 in the calculation, it's too volatile. Um, so uh, everyone has a bias, that's my bias. I'm a serious bear, I think that <laughs> I think that all of this modern living and modern prices is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't know how a state as big as New South Wales, it's our biggest industrial state, um, and it's, it's, it's very, very big. Um, I don't know how it can have a valuation of an average, average price for a house, not a nice house, uh, not a house you'd like for yourself, just an average house. And boy, average um, is a long way down the line from um, desirable. Uh, but that's over a million bucks here. And you're having the same thing in some parts of uh, the US as well. And uh, uh, Canada, they tell me, and elsewhere as well. Uh, so uh, here we are. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Leon saying there's no free press in the US. I know, I don't think there's one here. Well, we'll get a little bit of it. We're better than the US at least. Uh, Benjamin saying housing prices, this is this almost here. Well, very, very low interest rates. Um, and uh, the Fed uh, just gobbling up MBSs uh, at the rate. Could you believe that on the 30th, that's two days ago, 30th of June, federal government repos in the US, uh, where they, uh, governments literally, uh, uh, banks I should say, literally have an ability to park their excess funds uh, at the Fed, it's all reasonably short term, uh, but there was almost a trillion dollars that banks had to put a deposit with the Fed. Not a billion, a trillion with a T, not quite, not quite there, 920 something billion dollars that US banks 
who operate with the U.S. Uh, Fed uh, had uh, to deposit uh, with the uh, with the Federal Reserve Bank. I mean, I can tell you, liquidity is no problem for anyone at the moment, um, unless you happen to be a retail borrower. Okay, so this is what you should be believing: don't be a bull or a bear. Forex and futures uniquely give you the opportunity to be long or short, and they pay exactly the same going down as going up. And this is a really rare and precious function of these trading instruments. Uh, so be neither a bull or a bear, just simply follow the Daniel Code trade signals, both long and short. For most of this week until today, in fact, uh, we've been long S&P and short Russell. Um, Nothing, there's nothing contradictory about that. It's simply taking all of the Daniel Code signals. Now, I have a friend who uh, is no longer with us. He was an old man, uh, had a wonderful life, um, and he was a professor of psychology um, at uh, Launceston at uh, um, Hobart University in Tasmania. That's uh, the state that's on the little island that just drops off the bottom of Australia called the Apple Isle. Very, very beautiful place. Uh, and that's where you pull up at the end of the Sydney to Hobart annual yacht race uh, if you're uh, lucky enough and good enough to get all the way there. <coughs> but um, he was a professor of psychology and he got very interested in trading. He was a client of mine. Uh, and um, uh, he never could get the trading right. Uh, but what he did um, is he uh, started a service uh, where he was advising traders on uh, all of the psychological barriers to uh, being successful traders. And uh, the, he, you know, this is back in the day, he was putting out CDs and posting them. I did very well out of it. A um, lot of people uh, acknowledge, and they're more than you think, I promise you, that uh, the biggest barrier to being a really successful trader is your head uh, and, uh, and your belief system. Yeah, you're, because your belief system bleeds into your trading. So, um, I think I've missed a couple of slides here. I want to tell you this was it here. Um, so, uh, I'm a perma bear. We have clients who are permanent bulls. Um, uh, Dean, who uh, some of you uh, know, uh, he's one of our top traders. He's a farmer and he's a perma bull. Uh, he specializes in trading grains. Uh, he's very uh, follows in great detail because he grows it himself. He's a grower of these of these products, uh, and um, he reads the um, uh, Department of Agriculture reports that come out periodically. Um, and but he can't take a short position. He literally literally cannot sell on a sell signal. And uh, you know I'm trying to talk him through it at the moment and. Uh, uh, try and encourage him to just try to get rid of that bias. And I know how hard it is because I had it for years and years and years. Uh, and I was the other way. All I wanted to do was sell, sell, sell. Um, and, uh, you know, your belief system, everyone has them and they're great for social chit chat. But you must never let that input to your futures and forex trading. Uh, it's what's holding so many people back. Um, I, I've got. Everyone says uh, when they come to me, uh, I want to trade gold and silver. When I say everyone, I do mean probably up there well over 85%. Uh, everyone's got that bias. I want to trade gold and silver. Um, I have uh, other people who have other things they want to trade. But you've got it all wrong. You shouldn't want to trade any particular market. The business of trading is to make money, and the markets that make money are the markets that are, are active, alive, that have the most up and down movement. doesn't matter whether it's up or down or both, um, as long as it's going far enough and fast enough. Uh, so slow and sleepy markets, they're the death. Uh, that's what uh, totally ruins uh, your uh, profile, your trader's profile. Uh, and if you think you're in a, um, a correction, uh, stand aside. Um, we did that this week, and uh, I missed a huge buy signal in soybeans. Uh, I think it was, uh, but um, uh, I had formed the opinion and seen enough signals to say this is probably consolidating. Uh, so I just stand aside, and then we got a, a big breakout bar. Uh, mind you, it was hard to handle. It went down first and then up. It was a big outside bar. Uh, but um, uh, did that worry me? Couldn't care less. 
markets are going to be there forever. Um, and there are many, many other markets. I mean, uh, we're a very, very small business. We handle, we, we, we cover 15 um, uh, for futures uh, markets and, and 15 forex markets. There's always a market that's tradable. There are always markets that are better than others. Uh, so this is the number one problem, your belief system bleeding over into your trading. You should simply take all of the Daniel Code signals as they come. And if you can get started on that, you'll pretty well realize that is the way to trade. But So I acknowledge people have real difficulty. Um, and uh, the number one problem for uh, many traders is uh, their head. Um, and it's your head getting in the way of your trading. Get rid of the ego. Get rid of the id. Get rid of all of that. Simply take the Daniel Code trade signal long or short um, and remember that uh, you really need to if you're talking about equities uh, you need to be bullish because markets go up 85 percent of the time at least uh, in equities recently <laughs> it seems like forever doesn't it yeah, we'll see so let's have a look at we've been a lot of discussion about uh, the fourth seal uh, and uh, top, I want to just show you things about tops and bottoms uh, in market. Uh, this was uh, way back, this was the crash of 87. Uh, and this was a, a seriously fast market down and a seriously fast market up. Uh, and that's quite possible that we get one of those uh, in, in equities here. Uh, but it's not guaranteed that you're going to get um, a fast correction. Uh, and the vast majority of uh, corrections, major corrections, take a length of time. Uh, this is the dot-com top in uh, 2000, April 2000. Um, I traded this, and uh, uh, if you have a look inside the blue circle, uh, roughly you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half bars, and these are 24-day bars. In other words, each of this is the Daniel Code 24 day chart. There are 24 daily bars in each one of these bars. So um, the average length of a trading month is uh, 22 days. So this is something close to equivalent to a monthly chart. Um, and you can see this topping process took a number of months. So from the high, one, two, three, four, five, it was the sixth month before it even broke the low of the uh, high bar on the 24 day chart. Okay, so then look, that's the top. You can see that um, it, it was month 10 uh, by the time it broke the major support, the previous low that was holding this market up. So if we're going to get a slow correction, you don't have to panic. Everything in the fourth seal uh, that Frank DB does for us always says, wait for the Daniel Code trade signals. The Daniel Code signals will guide us. So you don't, don't have to be uh, panic about uh, a possibility of a market correction, uh, but you do have to be aware of it. So um, this is the dot com low, which is look at the hot look at this low here with nine months in making. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine, nine months, uh, a little bit more. These are 24 day uh, bars, not uh, 22, which would be the month. Uh, this is the uh, subprime mortgage CDO top in 2007. Uh, same sort of thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months uh, around that high uh, before it finally started to break out. Uh, let's have a look at the low, uh, a five month low. Normally, low snap back quicker. That's typical of a low. Uh, once it turns, it turns very, very fast. Uh, but this one took a long time. Uh, if you ignore uh, or just look at the closes, uh, of those bars inside the uh, blue circle there. You know, you're looking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months uh, to get that uh, happening. Yeah, so there we are. Let's look at the next one. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, the same uh, chart. This is um, uh, the S&P E-mini. Um, and uh, what's really interesting, this is the, the crash of 2009, uh, which was pretty well contained uh, until it broke uh, through that last level of support. Uh, and that's when it got really dramatic and uh, uh, the government started uh, 
worrying about it. Well, a lot of people are worrying about it. Um, I have a couple of uh, clients who are uh, wealth fund managers or uh, uh, CTA, some of them, uh, and one particular client um, who worked for Wells Fargo uh, down in Louisiana. Um, and he was following the normal um, uh, advisors' uh, rules, uh, just say don't sell. Uh, but I can tell you by the time this got down, uh, after two years, um, uh, there were uh, people starting to jump out of balconies um, and investors just losing the lot. Uh, and yes, it did turn and yes, it did recover. Uh, but that's a period that took uh, almost three years. If you wanted your money at any time in that three years, um, it wasn't quite as rosy as it was pointed out to be. Uh, so um, this is the 2020-2000 uh, uh, March to April, it actually started very late in February, uh, of the flash crash. Um, and you can see this looks very much like that earlier 89 crash I showed you. This is the worry uh, in all trading scenarios, that you can get a fast move and be wrong. Um, and if you are wrong, uh, you get punished. Um, and this trade, we traded all of this, and because uh, we actually had a very uh, important time signal uh, on the six day chart and the daily chart and everything else and TO3 blue line sells a lot you name it we actually got short the very first day after the top uh, and uh, in three trades down to that uh, low uh, it was worth $24,000 per one uh, e-mini contract so there's the argument learn to trade both ways um, the old saying is that markets go up by the stairs and down by the elevator escalator Elevator, I think, is the word I'm after. Uh, lift is an even better word, isn't it? Old-fashioned, old-fashioned word, lift. Uh, but you have to be able to trade short, folks. You have to be able to trade both ways. It doesn't matter what you believe. The market could care less about what you or I believe. It will do its thing anyway, and it's doing its thing basically on supply and demand, uh, with uh, small, uh, insignificant ripples. Uh, for news, uh, there we are. So this was the uh, uh, February, March 2020 flash crash. It can happen again. It can happen any time. Uh, so uh, how much of a flash crash is really a crash? Well, not much really. Uh, in terms of uh, being out of control, it's really, really dramatic at the time. Uh, but look where this market stopped. Right at the Daniel Code 59% red line retracement uh, of uh, one of those uh, swings. Um, it, it, it's telling you that there's, uh, although you, you, you feel the drama and live the drama at the time uh, in these flash crash events, there's nothing uncontrolled about them. They will finish up stopping at a Daniel Code number. Um, and um, uh, they're actually saying to you, this market is perfectly controlled even during the flash crash. In fact, as volatility increases, the accuracy of the Daniel Code signals improves. Unlike anything else, it just gets better. So this is the 2007-2009 crash. Now, uh, this is the um, S&P E-mini. Um, and with the most simple analysis, just an extension of the previous pullback, um, it stopped... Um, Six, five or six points away uh, from 114%, um, which is the next annual code number, isn't it? From what, zero, you start off at and half, which is 14.8 uh, points, 14.8 percent, uh, uh, and you can use that, of course, uh, together with the Daniel Code numbers to create your extension. So uh, this chart's got on at a number. Uh, of 659.50 for that low, uh, which isn't bad. That's only about six points away from the low. The true low was 666.75, and we had a Daniel Code blue line on the members chart. This is not a members chart uh, of 666. So, in other words, time and price uh, pretty much to the day, and uh, uh, a handful, less than a handful of ticks variants. Same thing. What looks like drama is actually being controlled, and it's being controlled by the Daniel Code. Now, think about the series of corrections that you're looking at here. 
Corrections generally tend to alternate in speed. In other words, if your last correction was a slow correction, you can expect the next one on probabilities to be a fast correction. Um, and uh, here, this is a long period of chart from April 2015 up to uh, uh, effectively April 2020, so say five years. You had two slow corrections, and then you, in between them, you had two fast corrections. Now, that's the fast correction, the first of them uh, that I've signaled fast, if you look at that, you'll say, well, it really wasn't fast. It went down, then it went uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six bars uh, up. Uh, these, are, these are weekly bars, uh, which we don't use very often, but it, it showed this point. Uh, but look at that first move down. Uh, in two weeks. Uh, if you didn't get that, um, yeah, you could kick yourself. Uh, and if you look at what happened um, in uh, March and April last year, $24,000 per one mini contract. You just, you've got to be able to take these trades, all of them. Don't pick and choose. Your head is the biggest problem. Okay, let's have a look at the fourth seal now because there's been an awful lot of talk about it as we uh, like. Uh, Frank's been doing a, a wonderful job there. Uh, but uh, let's have a look at this particular chart. This is the simplest fourth seal method. Um, I invented this um, back in about 2010-2011. Uh, um, and I think there was a, uh, uh, there was a tutorial, live tutorial um, in Taupo uh, that uh, Frank came to. Uh, he was a young man then, he's still a young man. Uh, brought his uh, young lady with him, Anne, who was then his fiance. Um, she's now his wife, they have two beautiful children. And that was the first uh, tutorial at which I taught the fourth seal. And Frank became very, very enamored with it and has spent years and years studying it, studying the history of it, getting to learn all about how the fourth seal works. Well, this is a really simple method of the fourth seal, and there are other methods that are much more complex, but this is the basic. Um, and this is seeing a time cycle uh, and then looking for it to repeat, and that's the highest probability. Um, if I asked you what's the weather going to be like tomorrow, um, the highest probability answer, if you knew nothing about weather forecasting, as I don't, uh, is you would say it's going to be something like today. Um, and that's the highest probability for a correct answer. And it's the same with the fourth seal. The highest probability of a cycle is for a cycle to repeat because it's doing this all the time. Uh, only a few months ago, some of you will remember, I posted uh, on the front page of the Daniel Code website uh, a 50, uh, uh, 50 period cycle um, on the uh, S&P E-mini. And uh, we got a nice reaction from it. Uh, nothing too dramatic, but we got uh, five or six days really decent trading from knowing that. Uh, in the same way, when I saw this uh, 59 coming in uh, at the high of uh, June, July, it was actually started in late February last year. Um, uh, and we had blue line trades lined up and everything else. Once the trades were elected, it only went slowly for one day, and boy, then it was on its way. Uh, it was really exciting stuff. So this is the most basic method of the fourth seal forecasting. Look for a pattern that's already happened, and then look for it to repeat. So uh, this market taken from uh, the uh, little inside bar, 59 periods uh, up into the high uh, in uh, February, that gave us the 59 cycle into uh, the flash crash. And then looking for that cycle to repeat, uh, we come to uh, the current bar uh, here. So watch this carefully. This is the E-mini. This is here, um, is, uh, this is the method uh, that I used to forecast the 2009 low. Uh, I noticed that the market had gone up 59 periods high to high on the six day chart, uh, which topped in the week or the six day Daniel Code period uh, of October the 16th, 2007. And that became the closing high. That's the highest close of a bar in this final sequence. So we have a swing high, which is the next bar. It's got a higher high uh, and a lower bar either side of it. That makes it a swing high. This bar that's here, we've pointed this arrow at. That's the closing high. It had a higher close than the swing high. So this market went 
closing high to closing high 59 and I then look for it to repeat and you can see it gave us the closing low on March the 13th six day period of that uh, time cycle the actual market low came in the following week by a few days uh, but that was the rule uh, to find that uh, 2009 low and we had price at 666 um, uh, on the uh, members charts uh, and a blue line by and uh, uh, lots of people over there for the tutorial we still have uh, members with us now who can say yes I, I remember that I know that that happened so it was uh, pretty amazing uh, for a little while uh, but afterwards, of course, it turned out apparently everybody called that low exactly to the day and the price. So there are always a lot of experts after the fact, as you all know. So that was a <coughs> simple, basic method of calling the 2009 low. Let's go back to where we are now. So. Um, the problem is that that little inside bar that we started our 59 cycle from uh, on the last um, previous chart, uh, that's not the closing high, uh, or rather that's not the chart high. It is the closing high, not the chart high. So if we move on and go to the start of the elected signal, the big sell-off, um, you can see that went 59 into the first bar down in the February March 2020 flash crash and if we say if we're looking for that repeat and we go to the next 59 period it's next week okay I'll look at the actual numbers with you but that's it's not this week it's next week so that's all very interesting stuff but did you notice the charts were changing some of the stuff I've shown you is off the index but the majority of it's off the future chart the S&P e mini future chart and they're not exactly the same so let's go to the index that's what we traditionally use for forecasting and uh, here we are we've put on a swing high to a swing high okay uh, that you can see the, the earlier swing high um, in uh, September 2018 uh, it's not the inside bar. The inside bar is the closing high, but it's the bar before that that is actually the swing high. Um, and that swing high goes to the swing high just before the market let go in the flash crash of 2020. And if we then take that period of 59 periods, this is all six day chart, this time on the index, you can see that the 59 period doesn't come in for another week. Now remember, for any of this um, uh, forecasting, there's inherent difficulties in counting because firstly, you can have different data. Uh, how, your, how your market, you get your daily data, how they form into six day bars, 12 day charts, 24 day charts, etc., will differ according to when your data started. Um, and when your data started depends on well, what you decided to download uh, from Trade Navigator um, and uh, it's very easy to have a slightly different uh, chart. As well as that, uh, some of our timing mechanisms, particularly the lunar mechanisms, fall on a weekend and when they do, um, there's no uh, weekend trading uh, in futures or uh, forex, although there is in Bitcoin, I see uh, the actual Bitcoin, not the futures. Um, but um, that's why they want you to put up more margin if you want to trade Bitcoin futures uh, to hold a, a trade overnight or particularly over the weekend because it's actually trading Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but not what, what we do, it's not. So um, the other inherent distant difference is that, that uh, lunar cycles with the chart has to put them on one of the trading days. So theoretically Saturday goes to a Friday, Sunday goes to a Monday, but you can finish up that it's marginal. In other words, um, uh, if you have a sale at half past 11 uh, at night on a Saturday, uh, that will go into Friday, whereas it, it, it just about break even whether it should go into Monday. So that's one of the important reasons that all of these forecasting signals, the uh, time for them uh, is 
plus or minus one period. Now, if you look at the uh, the bars where we've actually identified swing highs and, and progressed this further, um, if you look at that as plus or minus one period, uh, and we're talking about a six-day chart, you're talking about 18 trading days, which is nearly a month. There are 22 trading days in most months. And if this is accurate to plus or minus one period, on this, we're now talking about the six-day chart, but it applies to all of the Daniel Code timing charts, then you can get that signal being elected the week before or the week after. When I say week, that's the Daniel Code week, six days before, six days after. So effectively, it's valid to get that uh, whatever we're forecasting and, and what we're actually always forecasting. Mike K, I don't know if he's with us, he put a, a very good post in um, uh, Members Forum. Uh, what we're actually forecasting is a vibration. Uh, whether that vibration uh, leads to a one bar counter trend uh, or a totally, totally new trend that savages the market, um, is that, that, that's ruled by other things. That's not ruled by time. Only the actual turn, the vibration, uh, is ruled by time. Uh, but uh, you then have to form a view about uh, if there is a correction, how bad is it going to be? Well, let's wait and see the correction as it comes. It may be very bad. There's an awful lot of things that are uh, not right uh, in the world from something as basic as at market highs traditionally, uh, reserve banks have had fairly high, relatively high interest rates. They've upped interest rates as the market's gone on up and up and up. Uh, so they had a nice big uh, buffer there uh, that they could cut interest rates uh, to relieve some uh, selling pressure on the way down. In this case, it hasn't happened. Uh, we've got markets at record highs, equities in particular I'm talking about, at record highs right across the board, uh, yet we've got near... Uh, lowest interest rates in uh, many, many decades. Uh, so that's just one thing that's around the wrong way. There's a lot of others that are around the wrong way just as well. So, uh, But uh, there we are. This is, in my view, uh, this is the index. This is probably, uh, we don't have a perfect solution because we have a swing high uh, before the closing high. Uh, this, to my eye, is the best um, compromise solution because this is going from swing high to swing high. Uh, so we know that that's apples and apples and oranges and oranges. So this is just showing you a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Uh, the inside bar before the sell-off uh, back in 2018, um, that's the closing high, but it's not the swing high. And if you run from that period, 59 period, look what you get. You get another bar that is not the closing high. Uh, and that forecast uh, takes you a couple of weeks out. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at this particular forecast. It's so all on the S&P. Uh, now we've gone to an elected sell signal. Uh, and we can see the elected sell signal in August. Um, and the it's actually one bar too late <coughs> here, but you can see that's the second bar of the elected signal, and it's halfway down through the bottom already. So that's not a valid, terribly valid proposition, is it? Uh, so um, this was what I showed you on the S&P, uh, going from the same thing, this little uh, inside bar that this is counting from back in 2018 um, is not uh, the swing high, but it is the closing high. But it doesn't correlate. Does this actually correlate? Uh, the inside bar does. Uh, what I say correlate? Match up with um, a, a swing high, uh, uh, which is also the closing high in February 2020, and that gave you the uh, probability of the signal biting on this current six-day period. Okay. So look at this on its own now. We haven't talked about it enough. We had a 59 high to high cycle on the six day chart leading into the February 2020 flash crash. Who knew that? I certainly didn't, but I, I, what I can tell you is we got short the very day after the swing high. 
We had Daniel Code sell signals. We had blue line trades. We had minor cycles matching up on the lunar cycles, all that sort of thing. We got into this sell trade at the first possible moment. <coughs> and you can assume we're going to do the same uh, with all other uh, moves because uh, that's what we consistently do. So this is the index solution, which has still got a week or so to run. But it might be a week early would be this week. It might be a week later, be two weeks away. Uh, but this is the solution of the index, the S&P index, not the futures. Uh, that is uh, at least uh, the most valid. This is high to high in 59 periods. So we're looking for that to repeat uh, into, uh, I think this particular swing uh, just started recently on the 30th. Uh, might have started uh, on the 1st, uh, Wednesday. Uh, so um, uh, we're in um, hostile territory here, folks. So stay aware, lad. Be aware. Look for those Daniel Code daily signals because they will pull you into the trade. You can't actually trade a six-day chart or a 12-day chart or a 24-day chart because the risk on entry is way outside uh, your permissible entry rules. Uh, because you've got six trading days as a minimum in each of those bars and that's way outside your risk parameter so you have to get pulled into the trade by a daily signal um, and uh, that's what we do um, um, and uh, to the best of my knowledge we've never missed a major turn either up or down on the equities um, and this website started in late 2007 and I've been doing it for uh, another 10 or 15 years before that, not Daniel Code, but trading generally. <clears throat> so these should be your priorities of trading. Learn about markets. There are many of them, okay? Um, have a look at, uh, simply go to, um, I've got a link here. I'll uh, grab it for you in a minute. Um, the, um, it's Gain Capital, sorry, Gain Capital Futures. Took me a moment to grab that. I uh, haven't looked at it for a while. Uh, just have a look at the various markets there. You've got currencies. Now, don't forget, uh, a lot of people, some people, uh, don't want to trade Forex. Um, and that's because of the um, PFG uh, court case. It was a broker that uh, went insolvent and had been mixing up the client's money uh, accounts with uh, spending it as if it was his own, as some of them, unfortunately, have done in the past. Um, but that court case held that Forex, uh, spot Forex, was not a security within the meaning of the Securities Act in uh, the United States, which is covered uh, by all sorts of uh, benefits and rules. So a lot of people <coughs> since then <coughs> have switched to trading currencies. Uh, and if you like to trade currencies at their futures contract on the CME, it works exactly the same. You can take the Forex signals and execute them in currencies. The correlation is, of course, um, uh, close enough to 100%, 97% plus correlation uh, per point. Uh, so you've got um, Forex and currency futures. You've got equities, which is huge. You've got uh, metals, copper and precious metals. You've got uh, all the agricultural grains and what have you. Uh, you've got um, uh, the uh, commodities, you've got the, uh, like, uh, soybean or what have you. You've got the softs, uh, like uh, uh, coffee. Um, the, the, there's a whole range of them, and you should be aware of all of those markets. The next item is learn a good trading system with proven results. That's the Daniel Code. The third item is market selection. In practical terms, this is vital. Almost everyone has a favorite market or favorite type of market, and this limits your success and makes you a hostage to whenever there's a period of consolidation in your chosen market. So open your mind. All markets trade exactly the same. Um, I know promoters try to differentiate markets. Uh, Forex people like to talk about pips, which I thought only came in oranges and lemons. Uh, but a pip is just a tick. It's another name for a tick, the smallest amount the market can move. Um, and uh, uh, that's just uh, bump. That's window dressing. Um, all markets trade exactly the same way. Become familiar with the different market groups. Uh, we've seen people... Uh, recently make a fortune out of trading grains. Uh, we've seen uh, people make um, a fortune 
um, uh, out of some of the softs. Um, we've seen Forex. I've been saying to you for weeks, Forex is doing the heavy listing here. Boy, we've had some tremendous Forex trades. Uh, so uh, put out of your mind your bias. Have your bias. Be a bear if you want to. Be a bull if you want to. Great for social chit chat. Tell your friends about it. But that's nothing to do with your trading. Your trading. Your job as a trader is simply to execute the valid signals that the program creates. Uh, this is natural gas, which has had a nice run. Have a look at that. Uh, 4,300, the last leg up, uh, and a, a few nice uh, legs before that. So simple. This is success, incidentally. Just follow the signals. Some of the markets, if you're diversified enough, will always be doing well. Uh, and but be really on the lookout. The only time you re need to be seriously neurotic is if you think you're in a consolidation. If you do, either go to safety mode, if you've done a Daniel Coach tutorial, you know what I mean by that, or stand aside and uh, wait for that market uh, to have a, um, um, a proper uh, a breakout bar. Uh, so there was a success for you. This is coffee. Uh, today's bar is not on there. We had a pretty crappy outside bar here, uh, but uh, we got long one way, then short the other. Uh, but it was such a big bar, it, it's given back most of it at a loss there. Uh, this is a very good market, uh, coffee. Um, uh, and you can see there's nothing dramatic on it. Uh, it's just a quiet little earner. It just keeps making some money, making some money, making some money. Um, and don't forget, when I put a fail signal on there, almost always that fail is less than 50% of an average uh, true range, which I've talked to you about in the past. Uh, this is the Russell. I wanted to just draw your attention in success to VTE, which stands for Valid to Exit. Um, this trade, uh, the sell trade I'm looking at here, was 4,400 to the close of that big, big down bar. Um, and uh, for the uh, fourth seal post, uh, the, at the close of that bar, I said, this is valid to exit or VTE. Uh, and there, that's because there's a pattern there. You can't see it, but I assure you uh, there is a pattern there that Forex trade, that uh, uh, tutorial folks know about. Um, and uh, when you get that particular pattern, it's valid to enter. This made a hell of a difference because if you didn't take that, look where you got back to it. The next buy, uh, which was nice enough, but you, you gave back uh, about 50%, but certainly 40% of that whole down trade if you didn't know that that was valid to exit. So uh, you would learn that either if you've done a tutorial, you'd identify it for yourself, or you would uh, read the success signals. Uh, and you'd see where I posted valid to exit. Remember, I've been saying that uh, Forex has been doing all the, uh, a lot of the heavy listing. It, it's just been such great trading. Um, and that's caused by the instability in the US dollar. Uh, these are all, uh, these ones, next ones you're seeing are pairs of the US dollar. Uh, so there was your Daniel Code target recognition at the blue line. Uh, then an inside bar, up bar there, which created the TO3 sell signal. Down it went. Easy thousand dollars into today's close. This is the Euro USD, same thing. TO3 sell signal, seven hundred and thirty odd dollars per one contract into today's close. This is the British pound. It's got a little bit worth a little bit more. Uh, this was I haven't uh, put it on this chart, uh, but that was a TO3 sell signal, right at the high, fifteen hundred plus dollars into today's close. Which incidentally, look where it closed right on the blue line. I mean, almost zero variance there. Uh, this is the dollar yen, which has been a, a good bit of trading. Have a look at it. We've got a buy at the low, a sell at the high, and a buy at the next low, and we're still in this trade long. I haven't put the dollar value on this either. You can do it yourself. It's a nice bit of trading, and this is what the Daniel Code does for you. <coughs> Excuse me. This is our oh, sugar. This is a nice trade. This is an interesting market. When we started tra started covering this market years ago, the margin was five hundred dollars. Uh, the margin is now about eleven hundred dollars. You can see the present trade we're in to today's close is worth eleven hundred and twenty dollars. Any time you get a trade that's up near or over a hundred percent of margin, boy, that's a nice piece of trading. That's a really good piece of trading. Uh, so. Uh, uh, this is one of the smallest markets uh, that you can trade, uh, although there are lots of mini and micro contracts around now. Uh, but this is the smallest of the market we traditionally trade. TO3 sell at the high at the blue line. Down it went, 700 odd dollars into the low. 
which triggered a TO3 buy signal the next day, $1,100 up into today's close. So $1,800 in two close, in two trades, for a market that's only $1,100 margin. That's good trading, folks. That's really good trading. Okay, let's move on. As time is getting away, this is the S&P, our recent trading. As I told you, uh, until uh, uh, virtually today, we've been, uh, actually today, we've been short the Russell all week and long the S&P. Have a look at this, TO3 plus buy signal, $4,500 per one contract. And you can see where I put the fail there. That's the fail, uh, but the cost is very, very minimal. Um, it's less than 50% of the average true range. Uh, and, of course, when you get an outside bar on the day of a new entry, there was a sell signal there, uh, which was elected, then you must, must, must stop and reverse if you get an outside bar on that day. Uh, that's exactly the same logic as a failed trade. Uh, if the sell trade's elected and fails, the uh, stop and reverse for that is at the high of the setup bar. And that's valid for three days. It's happened an outside bar. It's when it all happens in one day. Okay, nice making money. Uh, so uh, here we are. Uh, all markets are controlled by the Daniel Code. Uh, your risk management is everything. Uh, make sure we've got a long weekend coming up, folks, for you. I uh, uh, hope you have a wonderful Independence Day weekend and holiday. Um, and um, make sure your stops are on. Okay, so uh, I think we're heading for more volatility and violence. Uh, if you're in doubt, stay out, uh, or better still, learn the Daniel Code trading um, and just make the money. Uh, we teach you, uh, we do run Daniel Code tutorials whenever uh, it's convenient. We do them all by um, remotely now by uh, go to webinar, uh, go to meeting rather, which is owned by the same company as you're looking at now. This is go to webinar. Uh, just click on the link and you'll be connected to me. Uh, all of our teaching is one-on-one -on -one with me. <coughs> we teach you everything there is to know about trading price, uh, everything to know about the magic and marvels of trading time. Okay, we uh, Forex and Futures trade almost identically. We actually started primarily a Forex site, but over the years uh, it's grown now so that uh, there's a lot of influence and interest, of course, in our futures trading as well. Um, so uh, if you're interested in that, including short-term trading, I don't recommend it, but if you are a short-term trader and you want to keep that sort of trading, do a tutorial and I'll show you how to make it a whole lot better. Um, so if you're interested in uh, being a, a super trader uh, and learning to trade the Daniel Code through Daniel Code tutorials, uh, send me an email, please, jneedham at thedanielcode.com, um, and uh, I should be happy to send you some documentation. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about uh, what uh, would suit you um, in the future. Uh, the business of trading future and forex is not to be right. It is about making money. Everything we do and optimize at the Daniel Code is about making money for you, the client. Okay, if you haven't already had a free trial, you're most welcome. Go to our website, www.thedanielcode.com. Start your free trial. Any issues, and if you've had a free trial before, the website may remember whatever you put in before. Sometimes it doesn't want to let you in. If you have any issues, please contact Terry at support at the danielcode.com uh, and he will uh, enable your access. Um, here's our standard disclaimer, folks. I do want you to read it. I do want you to be really, really careful trading. I promise you it is really easy to lose money trading. Uh, 90% of the official figures, I think, say 90% of people will lose their first bank in 90 days. I reckon it's closer to 99% in 30 days. If you don't know how to trade, I beg you not to risk real money trading until you are confident that you know how to trade. Better still, do a Daniel Code tutorial so you and I are both confident that you know how to trade. Um, and by the time we get to that stage, you will know how to trade. Okay, let's um, have a look. We've got some comments here that I haven't dealt with. Uh, uh, Benjamin saying uh, the speed of markets could be attributed to more uh, HFTs now. Uh, Vin Vix and uh, not bad uh, for many charts. Fin Vix, oh, Fin Vix, not bad for many charts. Uh, David, uh, I'm a partner with Trade Navigator. 
uh, so I use their product uh, and I do recommend it. Uh, but there, of course, there are others that do very well. Uh, Larry, thank you uh, for your kind words uh, and uh, do enjoy uh, your weekend's guide. Any update uh, on the 30-year bond, says Akshay. Uh, nothing in particular, mate. Uh, it's uh, very much uh, being contained. Uh, let me just have a look at our 24-day uh, chart here, uh, which is on the other computer. Here we are. No, it was it was trying to hold, it was previously been trying to hold one standard deviation below the mean. Um, and we had a uh, 100 and, I just can't quite see, it's got the chart bars over the top of it. Uh, we had a time cycle uh, that uh, highlighted that low, then went up uh, to the 89 high. Uh, it's broken down through the median and it's been fighting, uh, I've told you this, for month one, two, three, four, for four, four and a half months, it's been fighting to hold one standard deviation below the mean. That's its support on the uh, lateral charts, the ch charts that have the angles on that I usually show you. Uh, so it uh, looks like it's been successful uh, in that uh, in that quest there. Uh, of course, actually, we have daily trades in the Daniel Code, um, and you're welcome to look at those under the TO3 or the TO3+. plus. So uh, that's us for the time being, folks. As usual, I've gone about nine minutes over time. Uh, if that has uh, uh, been inconvenient for you, I apologise. Murph, good for you, mate, and cheers, and thank you. Uh, same for Hank, uh, and I wish all of you um, in the States a uh, very happy and safe uh, Independence Day, um, and look forward to uh, talking to you again uh, in the next two weeks, if not before. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye for now. John, supposed to be at Mount Tambourine tomorrow. <laughs> yeah.